Welcome back to the Praxis Test Prep channel. My name is Tasha, a former high school biology teacher, and today I'm going to walk you through some life science problems for the Praxis 5005 exam. Okay, so let's look at our first questions. Which of the following is an example of a closed ecosystem? So let's look at closed versus open. Closed, you're going to have no external sources, mostly man-made. Open, you're going to have interactions with other ecosystems. So if we look at our choices, we have tundra, terrarium, forest, and pond. We can eliminate the open ecosystems, and we are left with terrarium, which is our only man-made ecosystem. Question two is, what is an example of an ectotherm? So let's break down that word, ectotherm. Ecto means external, and therm means heat, and in this case, body heat. So let's look at our four choices. We have two different kinds of therm. We have endotherms, which create their own body heat, and we have ectotherms, which need an external source to have their body heat, meaning warm rocks, the sun, something of that source. There are a few different people, a few different types of organisms in this category. Reptiles, amphibians, and insects are in this category. So we can look at our options. We can eliminate both the human and the black bear right away because those are both endotherms. And we are left with the robin and the beetle. And the robin is also an endotherm. So we're left with our insect, the beetle. Question number three, in which part of the flowering plant is the pollen produced? So bear with me while I try to draw a flower. <laughs> so in the very inside of the flower, you're going to have this structure. And this structure is broken apart into three different parts. You have the top part right there that is called the stigma. That long tube part is called the style, and the bottom part is the ovary. Surrounding that internal part of the flower, you have these very small filaments, and they, each of the filaments has a tiny little head that's attached to it. And the tiny little head is called the anthers, and that stick that it's attached to is called the filament. Both of these are part of the stamen, and that gives you kind of a hint. The men part of that, that is the male part of the plant. These three that are the interior of the part of the plant are called the pistil. The stamen is the male part, and the pistil is the female part. Surrounding all of that are going to be the petals. <laughs> so you can kind of get a look of what where this is in the, fl in the flower. So the stamen is composed of both the anther and the filament. When you look at the anther, you're going to see kind of this powdery-like substance, and that is actually the pollen. And that pollen, because it's powdery, can attach to insects and they can go pollinate other organisms. The filament, that stick part, carries the pollen up from the bottom of the from the bottom of the flower, and the anther contains that pollen. So when you're looking at the choices, we can eliminate the filament, and we're left with the anther, which is our choice. Okay, so question number four. Mammals eat food and drink water through their mouths. Which of the following forms of nutrition does this exemplify? So we have four options. Let's go through all four of them. So the first one is chemotrophic nutrition. That means basically that inorganic compounds are being converted into orga organic compounds. This is mainly done by bacteria. So that's what you can think of when you think of chemotrophic. Holozoic nutrition is when you have anything consuming solids or liquids. This almost always also involves digestion, absorption, and excretion. You can kind of think of this is what humans do. So our third option is autotrophic nutrition, and that first word should kind of give you a hint. So autotrophs go through autotrophic nutrition. This is when 
Organisms make their own food. This is how you think of plants. Saprophytic nutrition is when an organism consumes dead manner or any kind of decaying man- manner. Um, the biggest one is mushrooms as an example. So if you look at all of these, our options are we can't have saprophytic, autotrophic, or chemotrophic, so we're left with hobozoic. Okay, so question number five. Autosomal recessive traits such as sickle cell anemia are only present if a person has both recessive genes. If a heterozygous father has a baby with a mother with sickle cell, what is the chance the baby will have sickle cell? So let's highlight some of these words. So recessive traits and recessive genes. The father is heterozygous and the mother has sickle cells. So that means that she has to be homozygous recessive, as you can see there. So we are going to make a Punnett square that is going to give us our likelihood. So to be big T, big T, that's what I'll designate as sickle cell. This would be homozygous dominant, would be big T, big T, which neither of our parents have that. Big T, little t, that is our heterozygote or heterozygous individual. And this particularly is what the father is. We also have little t, little t, which is homozygous recessive that we can see with the mother. And to actually have sickle cell anemia, you have to be homozygous recessive. So that is what the mother is. So let's put these on our Punnett square. So we have big T, little t, that's the father, little t, little t, the mother. And let's fill this in, bringing down that big T across that little t, bringing down little t and little t. Okay, so now we see that we have two out of the four potential offspring that would be that would have little t, little t. So that gives us a 50% chance, which would be answer B. I hope this was helpful. If you are looking for more ways to study, check out our other videos. Then also make your way over to study.com to check out our Praxis test prep courses. As a study.com member, you'll get full access to hundreds of practice problems like the ones I just walked you through, plus targeted instruction for any topics that you are still struggling with, as well as test strategy to help you maximize your score on test day. Finally, we want to hear from you. Please like and subscribe if today's video was helpful. Then let us know down below in the comments if there are any other specific topics you want us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying!